All right, guys, welcome to RC Mojo. This week we're on to bag B of the Tamiya flatbed trailer, the automatically retracting legs. There's lots of nice springs and the mounting plate for the pin in this bag. The legs are quite a neat build. Right, we're up to step four, the legs and pin. There's quite a few bits for this one. We've got a single M3 flange nut, the pin for the coupler, six M2 by sixes, one M3 by 26 countersunk screw, two M2 by eight cap heads, six two by eight cell tappers, two three by 14 pins, two scissor springs for the latch, two coil springs for the return, B5, the latch, B8, the back plate, B9, the cover, B3, the leg, two B12s, plastic washers, and of course there's two legs to build, so we need two lots of all the plastic parts. Lastly, there's the plate for the pin. Now, as we build, I'm going to use a tiny amount of grease where the parts contact and slide in the legs. The grease in the kit will do just fine, but ceramic grease from another build will work just fine too. First then, we'll fit the latch and spring. Before we put anything together, we're going to add a tiny bit of grease in the hole. Next, we need to pop a pin into the plate center hole so the pin just pokes through. Then we carefully fit a spring with the short end to the right, offer up the latch with the long end on the right too, and press the pin in all the way. We can rock the spring so the long end sits upwards and the short end should sit on the back plate. Now, so the spring has something to hook onto, we need to thread in a 2x8 near the end of the long part of the latch. We don't want to screw it in all the way. The idea is the spring can hook under the screw head so we need to leave about half a millimetre or so as a gap. Now we can hook the spring in and we should have a nice working latch, or at least the lever as there's nothing for it to latch into just yet. Next, we can slot the leg into the cover and check that it moves nicely. Generally, when people have trouble with the legs retracting, it's because they're getting hung up. On one side, there's a bit of plastic where it attaches to the parts tree. Even if you're careful, there's most likely a tiny nub sticking up. Even if you're careful, there's most likely a tiny nub sticking out. We can skim it with a sharp knife to smooth it out so that it won't catch and rub. Next, we need to fit a coil spring inside the leg. We use a 2x6 with a plastic washer to attach it. To make it easier, we'll get the washer ready now. The spring slides into the inside of the leg and the loop sits over a hole for the screw. Then while holding it in position, we need to thread in the screw and do it up so it's still just a little bit loose. We want to make a good anchor point for the spring, but we don't want to clamp it. Next, the leg drops into the cover, but first we're going to add a couple of smears of grease to the sides just to avoid hang-ups. Now we can drop the leg in and wipe off any excess grease. Give it a quick slide up and down as a last check. Then we hook the spring over the hole and just like the other end, screw in a 2x6 with a plastic washer. Again, we don't want to clamp the spring, so make sure it's not quite fully tight so things can still move around as they need to. If you gently guide the leg so it doesn't pop out, you should find the leg returns perfectly every time. If it needs a little bit of help, you might have something sticking out that's rubbing or catching. Now the plate can go on and be attached with the 2x8s, or so I thought. I wasn't paying complete attention to the manual, so I used four of the 2x8s, which did seem quite reasonable. I tightened them up and gave the leg a test, checking that the latch works nicely. It did, so I went and put the other leg together too. When I got to fitting the plate, I was two 2x8 short. I checked the diagram, and yes, I was supposed to use the 2x8 cap heads in the holes towards the end of the pins. The cap heads have a larger head than the usual JIS screw, so the pin doesn't fall out. A quick swap, so it's not really much of an issue. Bear in mind, I've built a few of these, and I think I've done the same thing every time. I even went for a rummage through a junk box and dug out some Hercules legs to check, and even they have a cap head next to the pin. Right, the last bit of step four is the pin. It has a countersunk hole on one end where we pop in the countersunk screw. Then the screw goes through the middle hole in the plate and we add a nut on the back and do it up nice and tight. 
you want to make sure the grippy bits on the nuts flange get a good grip to the plate. And that's about it for this step. There was a lot to talk about, but really it only takes a few minutes to put them together if you've built a few before. Step 5, fitting the legs and the pin plate. We need two M3x8s, 12 M3 flange nuts, two M3 nylocks, eight M3x12s and four M3x23 countersunk. For plastic there's a D9, a C2 and a C5. We need to build this step in the right order. Two of the nuts for the pin plate get covered up by D9, so we need to fit the plate first. We can pop two of the countersunk screws in the holes at the end of the plate with the extra central hole. Slide C5 over the threads and offer it up to the chassis. They'll need a bit of a wiggle to go in, and just possibly you might need to loosen the screws attaching the chassis rails to the main plate to get a bit more of a gap. Once it's down between the rails, we can flip the chassis over and thread on two of the flange nuts. For now we're just going to leave them slightly loose so we can get C1 in at the front. It should just slot in with little fuss. We need to slide in two more of the countersunk screws and then on the other side add two nylock nuts in the hex shaped holes in the rib. This time we can do the four screws up properly. Pay attention to the flange nuts as they will be a pain to re-tighten if they come loose. Okay, next we can fit the D9. We need to pop in an M3x8 from the underside, then from the top offer up D9 and slide in a nut. Thread the screw in and take up the slack, repeat on the other side and tighten the screws. The last bit is to fit the legs. And well, we've got eight screws, eight nuts and four holes per leg. So it's really not rocket science. We just need to hold the leg up to the chassis rail and slide in a screw. Spin on the nut, repeat three more times and tighten them up. Same with the other leg and that's step five complete. Step six, as Tamiya put it, the support leg crank. We need three M3x8s, two 3mm rod ends, two 5mm ball ends, one 3x8 self tapper, three brass coupler nuts, a 105mm rod, two B2s, C1, a C3, a C4, C6 and a C7. So it's out of the way, we're going to build the linkage first. As usual, it's just a case of grabbing the shaft with some pliers and thread a rod end on the ends. We want to set it up so there's a 90mm gap between the inside faces of the rod ends. It's not too critical with the legs that it's spot on, but it needs to be fairly close. You can use a vernier or a ruler to set it. Unfortunately, Tamiya haven't provided a full-size diagram in this manual, so you can just compare it. But I'm sure everyone's got a metric ruler somewhere. Next we'll fit the ball end to the C7 sliding wedge. It has a raised portion on one side with a hole in the middle. All we need to do is thread in a ball end and nip it up so it's nicely seated against the plastic. The other ball end needs to thread into one end of C6. Make sure you fit it to the right side and do it up so it's just snug against the plastic. To assemble, we use a tiny bit of grease in the main pivot hole in C6 before dropping in a couple of nut. Just as with the ball, make sure you've got it on the right side. Now we can drop in one of the M3 screws from the underside of C3 and hold it up with a screwdriver. Offer up the couple of nut and thread in the screw. Then we use the cross wrench on the nut so we can nip up the screw properly. We should end up with a super free moving lever. If it's not free moving, take it apart and find out why. On the top we need to fit C1. It's got a tab that fits into a slot that can be a bit fiddly to get in. But once it's all lined up, we use a 3x8 self tapper to attach it. If we test the lever again, we should find it still moves freely, although now with C1 it will restrict the movement quite a bit. The last bit to assemble is the crank box. The two cranks attach just like the lever, so we add a little bit of grease in the hole in the crank, pop in a couple of nuts, offer it up to the inside of the box and use an M3 screw from the outside. Repeat with the other one, make sure they're the right way round and move freely and that's step 6 complete. Step 7, fitting it all to the chassis. We need four M3 flange nuts, an M3x25, three M3x18s and a 3x12 self-tapper. Next to the coupler plate, we need to offer up the block with the lever. 
Now, so it doesn't fall off, we can fit the self-tapper into the middle hole in the rear of the plate. For now, just leaving it loose so we can line up the rest of the holes. At the front, we drop in the M3 by 25, and towards the back, we drop in an M3 by 18. Now, while holding the screws in, we flip the chassis over and spin on two nuts. Flip the chassis over again, and we can do up the three screws. The two machine screws can be done up nice and tight, and the self-tapper just wants to be snug plus a bit extra. Once it's all in, check the lever still moves nicely and it isn't catching on anything. Further back we have the cranks. These are pushed by the sliding wedge. Now to make sure nothing's going to get stuck, we're going to add a tiny smear of grease on all the sliding surfaces. A little bit on the top of the wedge and a little bit on the end of the cranks. You really don't need much, barely enough to even see. The grease has another plus point, it'll keep the wedge stuck in place while we offer it up to the chassis, which does make things a little bit easier. To attach it, we use the two screws. We go through the crank box, through the chassis plate, and on the other side we use the two nuts. Spin them on, then nip the screws up nice and tight. Right, now for a quick test. If we pull the legs down, or up since it's upside down, we should be able to push the ball end on the wedge to trigger the retracts. It needs a bit of force, but importantly, it shouldn't feel like it's going to get hung up. Try it a few times and make sure it feels nice to operate. Which just leaves hooking up the linkage. On the wedge end, we can just press the rod end down onto the ball. The lever end will need some pliers though, so we're not stressing the plastic lever. Get the pliers over the ball and the lever and give it a good squeeze. All being well, it should all work. We've been testing as we go, so it should be fine. If we pull the legs up again, we can push the rounded portion of the lever, pretending to be the fifth wheel of a truck, and the legs should retract. Generally, well, that's all there is to it but sometimes you might need to tweak the linkage length to make it fully reliable. But that's really only something you can do with a complete trailer and a truck. More often than not, I would end up replacing the legs with an electric set, but they're still fun to build and get working smoothly. And well, that's it for bag B. Next time we'll be on bag C, the axle, suspension and the wheels, which is going to be fun. It'll make it look like a trailer rather than just a plate with legs. Until then, I hope you had a good New Year celebration, and I hope you have a good New Year in general, with much radio control and fun! As always then, thanks for watching, like if you like, subscribe if you haven't, and leave a comment if there's something on your mind. Bye guys!